Now on CU's Top of the Hour. Summer break ended a week ago and classes are back in session. We're back for another season of our morning show to bring you the latest in news and entertainment. This past week, Cameron University celebrated its centennial birthday. The centennial kickoff included musical guests and games for all ages. Plus a survival story of a 21-year-old woman who spent almost a week in her truck after being thrown in a ravine. I'm Cecilia Ramirez. And I'm Brooke Whiteley. These stories and more today on Top of the Hour. In 1908, the Oklahoma legislature founded the Cameron State School of Agriculture, one of six agricultural high schools in the state. The institution was named after the first state superintendent of schools, E.D. Cameron. After 100 years of rich history in southwest Oklahoma, Dr. Cindy Ross kicked off Cameron's centennial celebration. Hello. Last week marked the beginning of school. Not only does this mean another semester of classes are underway, but it also means Cameron University is getting a little older. It's been 100 years since the Cameron State School of Agriculture was established, almost 80 years since junior college work was added, and about 18 years since the first master's degrees were awarded. This past century's success led to the kickoff centennial celebration at the football stadium last Friday. Kids got to play games and ride a mechanical pool, while parents got to enjoy the sounds of the Oak Ridge Boys. Once the festivities progressed inside the stadium, the Comanche Nation performed native dances as the Army participants parachuted their way in from the skies. Dr. Cindy Ross and SGA President Jessica DeWong kept the crowd out of their seats. But I want to know, are there any Cameron University students here? Happy birthday, Cameron. Continue to achieve greater success into your second century. 21-year-old Amber Pinnell is alive after being trapped for five days inside her pickup truck in western North Carolina. Authorities found Pinnell last week in a 100-foot deep ravine. Authorities say workers used ropes to lower themselves into the ravine and worked 30 to 45 minutes to cut her free. Pinnell said the thought of her kids is what kept her alive. She was treated for a broken leg, trauma, dehydration, and mild hypothermia. Nearly three years after the devastation this nation suffered to Hurricane Katrina, New Orleans may be planning an evacuation from another possible hurricane. Tropical Storm Gustav has already killed 23 people in the Caribbean, 15 on Haiti's southern peninsula, and eight more were buried in a landslide in the Dominican Republic. The storm is expected to become a hurricane after it reaches waters near Cuba and Jamaica. By the end of Labor Day weekend, the storm should be reaching South Texas and Florida. New Orleans began planning the mandatory evacuation in order to, pre to prevent a repeat Katrina and another rise in oil prices. An Oklahoma City man pleads guilty to killing the mother of his unborn child. 21-year-old Eric Kennedy Fawn will face a sentence of life in prison, with or without parole. His sentencing is scheduled for October 17th. The disappearance of Lauren Barnes led to the arrest of Fan in November 2007. Authorities discovered Barnes's body in a shallow grave at Oklahoma City's Stinchcombe Wildlife Refuge. She was nearly six months pregnant. A 13-year-old boy from Waco, Texas, admits to stabbing a teenage friend to death earlier this summer and receives a 15-year sentence as part of a plea agreement. After rejecting a 10-year proposal earlier this month, State District Judge Alan Mayfield accepted the plea agreement. The boy was only 12 at the time of the June 6 stabbing. Authorities say the boy, whose name is not being released because of his age, stabbed a 14-year-old Keith Dancer in the heart with a steak knife during a dispute. Judge Mayfield told the boy if he continues to show good behavior, he could be released on parole in three years. Let's move on to some celebrity news. Hip-hop artists continue to carry bad reputations thanks to assault and drug charges. West Coast pioneer Marion or Marion Suge Knight posted a $19,000 bail after being arrested Wednesday. 
Suge was accused of beating his girlfriend while brandishing a knife near the Las Vegas Strip. If the assault charges weren't enough, Knight also had ecstasy and hydrocodone in his possession. Another hip-hop star facing jail time is Earl Simmons, better known as DMX. The once platinum rapper was arrested in South Florida for several different charges from August of last year. He appeared in the Miami-Dade County courtroom not to plead his case, but to show his anger. Your client has a history, and all I know about your client, quite frankly, is what I read in his history and his failures to appear. What if I do this, Judge? What if I guarantee the court that I will, if, along with the bondsman, we will fly Mr. Simmons back? I'm not going to let you do that to yourself. Well, so, my discretion is to deny your motion to set the bond and to allow you to withdraw the waiver if that's what you want to do. No, Judge, we're not going to withdraw the waiver. Yes. And we'll still see well, him on October 3rd. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Oh, well, that just ingratiated you to me. I I've never heard the F word before, so it's okay. Ashley Simpson, Haley Duff, and Nikki Hilton are all celebrity siblings that decided to step out of the shadows and into some Hollywood spotlight. Solange Knowles is the sister of R&B diva Beyonce Knowles. She is hoping to make that same transition to try and match the success of her older sister. But some comments she's made on national television could affect the sales of her upcoming album. Solange Knowles joins us live to talk about her new and exciting album that just hit stores yesterday. Solange, good morning and thanks a lot for joining us. Good morning. I have to say that was uh, not a very professional introduction before. Please don't tie me into uh, family and my brother-in-law's establishment. You, um, okay, well, we do apologize. I, I, don't, yeah. we, I don't know if we talked about your brother-in-law's establishment. You're talking about with TMZ? No, no, no. I'm talking about just a few minutes ago. That, that wasn't live, Solange. That wasn't on TV. Okay, okay, well, whatever the case, we do apologize. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. Well, I don't think I'd even say that if I was the main star, especially if I'm just the backup in the no, show. No, I agree with you. She kind of needs to just stay shut. <laughs> yeah, she's just hurting her career before it even gets exactly. started. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Top of the Hour. Thanks to all our viewers for watching. And remember, all of our CUTV shows are now playing on YouTube.com. Just go to YouTube and type in CU Internet TV with no spaces. Scroll down and choose from all our CTV programming. You can still tune in on campus at the top of the hour, every hour. I'm Cecilia Ramirez. And I'm Brooke Whiteley. We'll see you next week, Cameron. Have a great Labor Day.